So the first thing you're doing in expanding these, it is basically distributed property. So therefore, number one, you're going to multiply that 7 into both of those terms. So you're going to multiply 7 by 2x. 7 times 2x gives us 14x. Then you're going to multiply the 7 times the 8. It stays a minus there, so it's minus 56. And then that's it. That is expanding, because expanding it means to multiply it out. All right, so for number 2, I'm now going to multiply that 4 by all three of the terms that are inside the parentheses here. So I'm going to do the 4 times 9, which gives us 36. I'm not multiplying in an x, so the x's are all going to stay the same. So it's 36x to the 5th. Then I'm going to multiply the 4 times the 8. gives us 32x cubed. And then I'm going to multiply the 4 by the 11, which is 44. Notice the pluses and minuses that separate the terms. Those are still there exactly as they were before. Nothing changes about those. All right, so let's do number 3 now. You're going to multiply the 6 into all of them. So 6 times 4, 24x to the 7th. Plus stays the same. I'm now going to do the 6 times x to the 4th. Notice I'm not multiplying multiple x's together, so the x's will stay the same. I'm not multiplying numbers together, so the number will stay the same. So it's just going to be 6x to the 4th. Plus is still there. 6 times 9 gives us 54x. And then minus 6 times 1 gives us our 6 there, and that's fully expanded now. So for these problems, when it says to factor, basically what we're doing here is we're doing the distributive property that we just did backwards. So for instance, in number 1 there, you're going to say, what can I divide both of those terms by? And we're going to be pulling that out. So start by writing down the problems. And then we'll go through and walk through at least a couple together, and then you can practice some more on your own. We'll take a look at those. All right, so with number one, let's actually work that one out then. We want to figure out what can I divide 8x to the fifth and 12 by. Now, there's actually multiple possible answers. Uh, we could factor out a 2, because I can divide them all by 2. What else can I divide both the 8 and the 12 by? 4. So I can divide them by 2, I can divide them by 4, either of those work. Now, when doing factoring, the general rule of thumb is that we want to go by the biggest number that we can divide out. So I'm going to go ahead and divide both of them by 4 in this case. So if I divide them by 4, that gives me 2x to the 5th plus 3. But now, notice some, that I, what I just wrote here is not equivalent. This is distributive property backwards. So whatever I divided out, I got to put parentheses around this and write that number out front. Because the whole idea is that if I multiplied that 4 back in using distributive property, I'd get what we started with. And that's what we're looking to do with these. So with that in mind, go ahead and go on to number 2. All right, so with number two, again, we got to say, what can I divide all of them by? So I'm looking at 24, 28, and 36. The biggest I can divide them by is four. So I'm going to divide all of them by four. And so that I remember that I'm dividing by four, I'm going to go ahead and write down that four right now. Okay, so 24 divided by four is six, so that's going to become a 6x cubed. Minus is still there. Nothing is changing the addition, subtraction stuff in between them. A 28 divided by 4 is 7, so that's going to become 7x squared. Plus, then 36 divided by 4. 36 divided by 4 is 9. All right, now, before I go on, I do want to take a look and see how can we know whether this is actually completely factored. How do we know we got the biggest number out? The way you can tell is look at the numbers that are left inside. In this case, that's 6, 7, and 9. Can I divide 6, 7, and 9 by anything other than 1? No. There's no other number that goes into all three of those. So that means that the 4 that we pulled out was, in fact, the biggest number that we could pull out. So that one now is completely factored. That's your final answer. All right? Now do it with 3 and 4. Okay, number 3. We say, what can we divide them all by? In this case, 15, 30, 20, and 5. It ends up being... Five, yes, excellent. So, 
first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write down the 5 out front to remind myself what I'm dividing by. Then 15 divided by 5 is 3, so that's going to be 3x to the 7th. Minus stays the same. 30 divided by 5 is 6, so that's 6x cubed. Minus 20 divided by 5 is 4, so that's 4x squared. And then this is the one part that sometimes trips people up. When we do 5 divided by 5, we get 1. That 1 still has to be added on to the end. So you still have to have that plus 1 hanging around inside the parentheses. And finally there, for number 4, what can we divide all the terms by? 12. 12 is the biggest. Yes, excellent. Now, if you didn't see 12 at the start and you divided by something different at the start, that's okay. You can do that. It's just that you would take it in a couple steps in that kind of a case. But let's go ahead and do it by 12. So pull out the 12. Then 48 divided by 12 is 4, so we got 4x to the 8th. Plus stays the same. 12 divided by 12 is 1. So all we're left with in the middle here is the x cubed. I don't need to write 1x cubed, of course, but that is what it is. It's 1x cubed, so we just write it as x cubed. And then 60 divided by 12 is 5. And so then that's our final answer for that one. Notice the instructions that you're given here. You're given the instruction to factor each one. It's assumed that that means factor out the biggest number, not just any number, but factor out the biggest number. And when we see factor, we know that means distributive property backwards, the opposite of expand.